The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello everyone and welcome to this week's webinar. This week is um, actually part two of a previous webinar that I did. Um, if you attended the desktop conference, which I think was back in September time, something like that, um, I did a presentation then on the Fluent UI. Um, it was pretty popular and many, many thousands of views. And um, apart from a couple of people that do a thumbs down, because somebody always does, um, it was very well received. A lot of people were very um, happy with it. And um, a lot of people said, well, you know, you didn't show any code. And there was a good reason for that. The desktop conference was designed for um, people in general, not specifically Delphi programmers. Um, and so we tried to sort of labor on the techniques and what the Fluent UI was rather than the code behind it. And this week, we're coming back to rectify that because uh, all of you watching are probably Delphi people or possibly C++ builders. Some of the uh, things in here apply to that as well. But um, this is heavily aimed at um, Delphi. Um, my name, as you can see on the screen, is Ian Barker. And I'm an Embarcadero MVP, Delphi MVP. You can get to me um, at about.me forward slash Ian Barker or to my blog, which is www.code.show.com forward slash blog. You can read it on there. Um, now, if, you're, uh, if you've missed part one um, or you are not really following along because you're doing something else at the same time whilst you're, uh, you've got this webinar on, don't worry, everything's up on the web. Um, this week um, is the Delphi Fluent UI Part 2. Um, but the Delphi Fluent UI Part 1 is the, the URL at the top. So tinyurl.com forward slash Delphi Fluent UI. This webinar, kind of self-referentially, um, there's a blog post about it, which is not live. Uh, it'll be made live whilst you're actually watching this uh, particular screen, is um, Delphi Fluent UI 2. Uh, you can also reach me, as you can see on the screen there. And also, all of the code you're going to see today, because you know what it's like during a webinar, it flashes past your eyes, and you say, oh, what was that bit that he showed me about the uh, the buttons doing something cool? Um, that is up on a repo on GitHub. Uh, if you go to github.com forward slash check digit slash fancy UI, you'll see all of the code there, and um, you can download it and have a play yourself. Well... Let's talk about Fluent UI in case you didn't see part one. Um, if you want to, pause this, and uh, if you're watching this on replay, and go and watch part one, it might help you. If not, we'll just briefly go through it now. Um, Fluent UI is, if you've used Windows 10 or any of the more uh, recent uh, versions of Microsoft Windows, then you're going to have seen it already. Fluent UI is the design language, and that's just a posh way of saying a set of rules about how the screens and the fonts and all the rest of it should look in the apps. They have an official website, uh, which you can see on the screen there, microsoft.com forward slash design forward slash fluent. And there's also a Wikipedia post, which is not quite as um, uh, competent, shall we say, in describing things because there's a kind of mishmash of uh, ideas going on in that uh, Wikipedia post, but it, it does cover it. Um, so go to either of those uh, links and you'll see what's going on. Now, Fluent UI in action, uh, if you have got Windows 10, if you right click on the uh, taskbar and select settings, you get a screen like this coming up. And the screen that you see is the um, kind of replacement, I suppose, for um, the control panel. Okay, And it's flat and it's mostly text and there's some line icons rather than um, super colorful 3D um, you know, uh, representational, representational icons, they're more um, abstract. And also, um, if you use dark mode, then you will see this kind of screen. I use dark mode all the time, but during the presentations, I turn on the uh, light mode because it's easier for you to see the text. But you should see on the animation at the moment what's happening. You can see here um, the border of the screen, if I click away, disappears. And if I um, hover over the buttons like that, you can see that there is a um, an affordance, which is a, a designer's way of saying that it, it looks like it should be clicked because something happens as you hover over it to indicate that it's a clickable link rather than just some flat informational text like 
my email address at the top. Um, when you highlight over them, you can see that uh, nice little graduated um, fill over the buttons. And you can see the border there coming on and off. So that when I click away from the app, the border will disappear. This is actually one of the things in the Fluent UI spec that says that it should indicate whether the window is active or not. I personally think they've still got a little way to go with that because it's still not entirely clear, um, I think, which window is active. But if you pick um, your colors correctly, it makes it a little bit more easier. Um, so key concepts. Well, one of them is light. And as you can see here, um, as I hover over the various elements, um, there's a thing called a reveal highlight. So something happens to uh, a clickable item when you hover over it. And the same with reveal focus. If you actually hit uh, one of the controls, with, uh, use your tab button or actually click it and select it, then it will also reveal that that particular control has a focus. So if you have an edit box or a list box, then it shows that it, it should be um, clicked or is being used. The other key concept is depth. And this is along the Z axis or Z axis. The Z axis just means how three dimensional it is. So in this screenshot here, which isn't actually doing much, you can see that um, as I hover over the Word, um, Word, <laughs> Microsoft Word icon, it pops up and gives you a three dimensional um, layer. This is quite an important concept in this particular screenshot is from the Microsoft Office 365 launcher, which is fully Fluent UI. So it's kind of um, one of their um, demonstrations, shall we say, or one of their proof of concepts or, um, I don't know, leading the way, however you want to look at it, um, for the Fluent UI. You can see on the top right there, there's a button that says Install Office, and that also has um, got an affordance. It's got a shadow behind it just to make it stand out a little bit. So shadows are back, even though they told us to flatten everything, no more no more uh, uh, shadows, no more borders, make everything flat. Well, apparently now Fluent UI and soon the new UI3, which you can read about another time, um, it, it comes back with some depth. Now remember this screen that you see here where I'm hovering over the Microsoft Word icon because I'm going to show you something with FireMonkey in a second, how to do that. Um, and the other thing that they talk about, the other key concept is motion, which I'm not really going to show you today because it's a little bit complicated. But if you can see in the mail um, uh, ad account um, screen or experience, which I think is how Microsoft put it, um, when you go into add an account, you can see that these clouds are animated in the background. It's a nice, uh, very cool video. Um, so if you go to um, show that screen for the first time, it should loop in just a second. Um, like so, here we go. Watch those clouds. You see them animate. So that is another key concept, which is motion. It's designed to give depth and affordance to the screens. And you're going to see a lot more of this. Microsoft are um, going big for this particular idea. And the final um, real concept, I suppose, is the idea of the fonts and icons. The one thing that they use absolutely everywhere, and I'm going to show this in code in FireMonkey and uh, VCL in a moment, is the Sego UI font. And this is absolutely everywhere. If you see this screen here, this is your uh, background screen when you uh, right-click on your desktop and say Personalize. And um, all of those fonts that you see there are actually one font family, and that's the Sego UI. And this is a, a font that was designed by Microsoft or especially commissioned by them. And they chose it for readability and for functionality and versatility in that it will actually allow you to um, uh, use most of these screens with the one font family and just with um, um, different sizes and different uh, weights, so bold and italic. We don't really use italic anywhere, actually, but uh, bold certainly. And again, just remember this screen, because this is one we're going to come back to in a moment. And the obviously most famous uh, key concept is material. And you'll have heard of it a lot, which is acrylic. If you see, as I, um, in this animation, move the, um, the color screen over, when I um, make sure that the app is active, it will show this um, background through with a blurring called acrylic. It's a um, textured blurring, and you can see as I move the mouse around, um, things happen. Uh, 
If I click away from the app screen, which will happen in just one second, you'll see that it, it goes opaque. In other words, it doesn't um, have transparency anymore. And this is another aspect of Fluent UI, that your app's transparent areas should go non-transparent. And again, this is to help indicate which of the windows are um, active or inactive. So uh, dynamic blurring, acrylic, which is that kind of fuzzy thing. And by the way, the reason they have this, uh, this acrylic is to make it easier to um, see what's going on, but still have that cool transparency. If it's completely transparent, which I am going to show you in a moment, it actually makes it very difficult to read because the text gets lost on a busy background. Um, but uh, acrylic helps with that. It blurs it and makes it have that kind of uh, very attractive look. So uh, let's take a look. So um, the first screen I'm going to show you is um, this one. Um, now you've seen this before. This is obviously the Windows 10 screen, and you saw that I went to it via personalize. And um, if you see, as I click on the Windows 10 screen, um, the screen goes transparent, and uh, here's all the fonts and all the rest of it. And when I um, click on colors and things like that, then uh, you can see it change. And it mostly um, is a fairly sort of uncluttered screen. If I click away from that screen, it goes opaque. Now, if I um, just double click on this icon here, so I'll move this over so you can see it. Double click on this icon here and bring this over. You'll see that this is a screen as well. Okay, uh, very, very similar. Um, exactly the same. It's got um, opacity. In other words, you can see through it, and uh, it's a bit easy. If I go in a slightly darker um, background there, and um, it's a setting screen. But this is a Delphi program. Okay, and you might ask yourself, well, how on earth did he do that? Well, I'm going to show you that in a moment. And this um, Delphi program doesn't use anything apart from a set of third-party controls. Um, from a company called ALM Dev or Media Dev, um, but uh, you don't need to use those. I just happen to have used them to um, pirate or copy <laughs> this version of Windows 10. Now, this version of this screen that I've made here, the Delphi one, actually would have matched it completely, but as it happens, Microsoft released an update and this screen changed, so it wasn't quite the uh, same screen you've seen before. It's annoying. But um, believe me, on some versions of Windows 10, this is identical, and it's actually very difficult to see which one's which. So we'll close that screen. So um, if I just show you those controls that I just used, um, this is actually the demo from our media dev themselves and shows the capability of their controls. As you can see, um, as we go over things, this part here is transparent. And um, when we click away, it goes opaque, which is the desired behavior. And if we click back on the app and then go away, it actually will not uh, um, show that behavior anymore. This is our media devs um, set of controls. What they do is they do custom drawings. So it's not FireMonkey and it's not VCL. It's kind of their own library. Um, but it is uh, based on the VCL framework. So you write a VCL app and drop their controls on and off you go. So the settings screen that I showed you earlier is using these set of controls, and this is one of their demos. Okay. Um, to have a contrast between the different apps that we get, if I run this app, this is part of a um, project that we did for um, Embarcadero when we were doing a comparison between various types of technology. Um, the quest the the, the question was, could we, um, how, how long would it take us, shall I say, for us to produce an app that is semi-transparent? And if you see me move this around, you can see it is transparent in the background, um, hopefully. Um, I think you should be able to see it. Hopefully it shows up on your monitor. But you can download this. This is on my repo. Um, and all it does, it's a, it's a calculator. So, yeah, what does that? But it is all VCL. Okay, you'll notice the buttons don't do anything. That's because there's nothing here. Well, I'm not you doing any special trickery. Everything you see here with, is with a few lines of code to make this VCL app go semi-transparent. Um, you can make it even more transparent. I've just picked um, the standard transparency. I'm going to show you that in a sec. 
And this is a slightly different version. This is the um, Fluent UI version. Now, if I um, just swap to my, my colors for a second, go back to dark mode, because it shows up a little bit better in dark mode. So we've gone back to um, dark mode at the moment. If I run the app, you'll notice the calculator before was in uh, light mode. And the reason is that this um, Fluent UI version of the calculator, my same code, the back end code that does this, working out how things work in here is all the same. Um, but I happen to be um, looking to see what the um, color mode of the Windows operating system is, and then acting accordingly. Now, um, you'll notice as I move my mouse on the buttons, that very cool Fluent UI highlight happens, and you'll notice that there's some very um, nice things here as well. I could show you the standard Windows um, calculator to show you how close this is to it, but um, to be honest, we haven't really got a lot of time I'm trying to just get through the uh, presentation. Uh, so we've got time to chat about questions and answers afterwards. But the code for this is up on the same repo that all these others are, apart from the Almedia Dev one. Um, but this is a true Fluent UI app. And if we go around, you'll see some transparency going on in the background. Again, I don't know how well that's going to show up on um, on uh, video. Uh, and the final app that I'm going to show you some code for in a moment is one that uses no standard, no uh, additional controls. But actually, it's just pure um, uh, Fire Monkey. And what you'll see here, if you can just about see through there, that again, this is transparent. It shows up there when I go across the mountain. And you remember I told you about the Microsoft Office Word icon, and I said, watch what happens when it hovers over it, that it pops up, so it gives it that depth. Well, this is what happens here as I go over these sections. You can see there's that rather kind of attractive, um, subtle um, shadowing okay the same with these panels and just to show you that the transparency works in a, a very kind of effective way and that not everything has to be transparent I've got some text that says hello with a shadow behind it and um, that uh, that that's just using standard controls I have not used anything other than fire monkey to do this now if I choose to um, you'll see that this border here is actually red and I'm just going to um, go through, and you can change which uh, color you want. So I'm going to just pick this one and say blue is going to be my accent color. You'll see this part change here, and after a couple of seconds, the border here has gone uh, blue as well. If I now go back to here and my app gets focused again, you can just about see that the border is blue. And again, what I'm doing here in this Fire Monkey app with no third party controls is looking up to see what the color is of the um, accent color, as it's called in, um, in uh, Windows. And the same goes uh, for these things here. You see these icons lighting up with the accent color before they lit up red. This one's always red because that's how Windows does it. These ones light up blue. If I go back and choose a different um, color, um, on my colors, and I'll choose uh, green because that should show up really kind of uh, garishly. Um, you see the border's gone green here, and when I go back to my app here, it's green, and these icons are green. No code, zero code to do all of these things that you're doing here. This is all just done with FireMonkey. Okay, so um, great. Uh, I'm sure you're, you're kind of impressed by that, at least I hope you are. So let's. Um, Take a look at some code, shall we? So what we're going to do is I am remoted into a machine here. And uh, we should go full screen. Um, right. So let's um, first of all look at the... Um, I wonder why I can't go full screen here. Okay. We'll worry about that later. Um, I'm remoted into this because, it, as it happens, I've got lots of different versions of Delphi on different machines, and the one that I'm presenting from uh, is uh, got some uh, slightly confusing ones. If you're part of the uh, beta um, test, then you'll understand what I'm talking about. Um, but this is uh, Delphi 10.4 Sydney, 
and this code here is for the FireMonkey app that I showed you earlier on. So you can see the app here, and if I just um, run that app again, um, I forgot to show you one other thing that it does. As you can see, um, we've got this transparency here. If I um, do this, I can actually increase or decrease the transparency. Um, to make it more or less readable. Um, you'll see it's slightly blurred here, and if I click on here, I can turn it off being transparent altogether. The standard behavior is, of course, when you click away um, from the app, then and it loses focus and the transparency disappears. But uh, as it happens, I've um, uh, uh, turned it off. So back on, back off, very pretty. So going back to the code itself, the way that I do that um, in the um, app is that I, um, if I just pin this structure open, you'll see that I have um, a control here, okay, which is an image, okay, and it's uh, got a rectangle behind it, and it's just a T rectangle, and I have a fill effect, okay, and the fill effect just says, when the mouse is over, which is the trigger, if the mouse is over, um, go red. And when the uh, mouse goes away again, then it go that, that effect disappears. The trolls here are similar things. It's a rounded rectangle with a label in it, so it's just a straightforward label. You know, you can change the text and say section five or whatever you want. Um, but it, the rounded rectangle has got the label inside it so the rounded rectangle is hosting that label and it has an effect which i've dropped on the rounded rectangle and that is a shadow effect and again the same thing is uh, as before uh, the trigger is when the mouse is over turn the shadow on and so what that does the effect is this this if you can see just in section one just here as that uh, um, effect triggers it will do this and that is repeated throughout here, so that's what gives me this um, this uh, effect. Zero code, absolutely zero code involved so far. We haven't written a single line of Delphi code. Now, I've also got an action list, and the action list is just so that these buttons do some things. And it's, it's really straightforward stuff. It just maximizes and minimizes the rest of it. Now, um, the only other thing which I see even um, MVPs get wrong, weirdly enough, is um, how to make um, forms transparent or not transparent. Okay, and the other thing that they um, get wrong quite a lot is the opacity. Okay, now if you want your um, your form to be transparent, I see a lot of people writing a piece of code that says something like set window long something or other. You really don't need to do this. In a VCL app, like for example the um, VCL calculator, which is um, this one. Uh, in a VCL app, you actually have a um, an alpha blend value, and if you change the alpha blend value um, from 250, which means not uh, transparent at all, downwards towards zero, so the, the the smaller this number becomes, the more transparent your app will become. So this is the VCL calculator. Okay. Um, with FireMonkey, everything's drawn differently, okay? So to make your app uh, go transparent, you select the form and say transparency, true. I've turned off the um, border, okay, because I want the app to have that kind of custom border. If it was a VCL app, you can do it in the VCL um, settings itself, but in FireMonkey, it's slightly different. And um, in order to make some sections uh transparent or not transparent, you have to adjust the opacity. The opacity is how see-through something is, for those that maybe don't understand the word opaque or opacity. So a 0.5 opacity means it's halfway transparent. Opacity of 1 means you, you it's not transparent at all, and opacity of uh, 0.1 means it's very, very see-through. Okay. And so when uh, you're clicking on this particular uh, a control here, it's uh, running a, a change event here, and it's just saying, well, if the spin box uh, is 10, and this is just an anomaly on the control I, I, I picked, then uh, turn the opacity off completely. Okay. 
anything else, set the panel's opacity to 0 point whatever that text is. And you'll remember um, the way that worked is like this. Okay. So the more opaque it is, so it's 0 0.2 at the moment, the more uh, the more the opacity uh, value is uh, smaller, the more opaque or transparent it is. Okay. And um, the other thing that we looked at was what happens um, if the uh, form um, loses focus. Well, on here, what I do is I, uh, I've got two, um, two procedures called uh, form uh, activate and form deactivate, okay, which are events on the form. So we go to the form up here. Um, so I go to the form up here. Like here, there's the event form activate and form deactivate. Now, with FireMonkey apps, um, because they're cross-platform, they're multi-platform, when you your app loses focus, then you'll get this uh, event trapped. With a VCL app, you actually can control that um, slightly differently. You actually have to look at the applications uh, on focus app and, uh, and lost focus and um, settings, uh, which I'll show you again in a moment. But uh, all that I do is when the app loses focus, I just update the focus. So if it's not focused, then I um, turn the border to white and I update the transparency to be nothing. Okay, if um, if it has got focus and it's not maximized, because when the apps are maximized, they shouldn't um, show the border the way that uh, we've been shown, and they shouldn't be transparent. Then, uh, then, then we, uh, if they're not maximized and it is focused, then we uh, we update the transparency. Okay. Um, apart from that, there's not an awful lot of code in here. The rest of the code is to make this happen. So in here, I have a panel. Okay. And when your mouse is down on the panel, it will say, oh, have you got your left mouse button down? Okay, then we'll drag the, the, um, the app around like this. And the reason for that is because we've got rid of the title bar off here. So we need to be able to tra uh, drag it around. Now, what I haven't done is implement code that happens when I um, go to the right or left of the monitor. What should happen when I drop that uh, on, on the right hand side of the monitor is the app maximizes. Again, uh, um, you know, there's only so many things I can show you, and um, you know, it's an exercise for the reader. I um, also detect at the very start of the um, the uh, activation process what the where is it? Uh, focus here we go what the accent color is okay and that is in a unit that i've put up on that repo as well all it does is uh, it's a bit of a hack actually um there is a undocumented currently undocumented um api that allows you and it's called the desktop window management uh, api um it has been surfaced i understand but um i'm trying to make this appeal to um lots of different versions of delphi not just um the very latest versions um Excuse me, but uh, what we do is we look at a registry key. We read an in, uh, an integer from the registry, and that gives us the accent color. Now that accent color is um, slightly obtuse, in that um, if I pull this up, this is the registry key we're reading, and that's the value we're looking at. It is a, a very long number, and you can also read it as hex as well. Now. Um, for Delphi, for this to work as a Delphi color, you need to reverse these bytes here. So take away the FF, and then it's 00B7C3. Um, we'll turn it into a T color. Now, you can actually do an uh, and, I think, a, a, a bitwise and on this value, um, or you can use a thing called get RGB color, and there's a get R value, get B value, and get G value. R, B, G, yeah. And um, that will extract those out. I uh, played around with that, and I, it just took me too long, so I hacked it. You know, good old hacking. Uh, what I did was I take that value and make it into an eight-digit um, hex number, which is uh, what it is in the registry anyway, like that. And I um, extract, um, take away the, the first part of it. I add FF because it's not always FF, by the way, in the uh, registry. 
and then I just take out the values, the RGB values, and do it that way. It's an absolute hack. It's horrible. Um, I apologize for it, but it works. Um, and it doesn't require you to have any sort of bizarre extra units or um, lots of um, uh, very heavy graphics units or anything to make all those things work. Um, so that's what that does. So kind of cool. Um, you know, I, I, it doesn't do a lot, but that, that will give you 99% of a start for what you want to do. The icons have got to be cool. Um, don't forget as well that the one thing you do need to do is um, on your um, test UI, um, you need to make sure, I think it is by default, that the high um, resolution switch is turned on so that you've got per monitor um, V2 turned on. If I go to the... Um, Okay, I think this one. Let's see, no, it's not that one. Let's see, AMD style. Yes, okay. So if I um, go to this one, uh, this particular uh, calculator, this is one that uses the Al Media Dev controls. Now, um, the Al Media Dev controls are um, GSP. Style controls. Hmm. Should have thought this part through, shouldn't I? Rather than do it live. But there you go. Um, oh, what's one of their controls called? SCGP button. SCG. Yeah. So here we go. So they have a number of different controls. They are called their style controls, and what this does is gives you alternatives for. Almost all of the controls that are out there um, that you could want. Sliders and list boxes and, and things like that. So um, if you look at their um, very pretty app here, um, and we choose a theme like Slate Gray, all of these kind of controls that you see here can be themed. Um, this uh, particular version of their app doesn't actually um, show those uh, different controls, but um, they've got alternatives for almost everything you could want. It's a it's an interesting set of controls, and more so because it's only ninety nine dollars, which is an absolute steal. I think is insane, and that license that you buy from him, and I have no con uh, connection with our media dev, um, other than an enthusiastic person that uses them. Um, that license of ninety nine dollars gives you free updates and new versions for life. That's very unusual. Most people say, you know, for two years or a year or six months or whatever. But uh, if you buy a license from them, you get these controls forever. They look just like your regular um, uh, controls. Oops. Um, look like your regular controls, but you have a number of additional um, properties. So, for example, on the form, there is this ability to say, um, fluent UI background, I want the acrylic um, version you can um, choose the opacity. There are an absolutely mind-boggling array of different um, uh, properties that you can set. And it took me a very long time. If you remember the settings app that we have here, uh, it took me absolutely ages to um, find the right combination of um, acrylic and acrylic background and all the rest of it. Um, to get the setting screen looking like the Windows 10 setting screen. Um, but I did it. <laughs> it took me a long time, and I grew more gray hairs and lost even more hair than I didn't have already. But uh, but it's very good. But again, um, all of these examples are up on the um, internet uh, in a publicly open repo, so you can download these and play yourself um, with them and see the kind of um, things that you can do. There is a lot more to Fluent UI, but um, really what I'm trying to show you here are the um, the basics of getting some of the look and feel, like the movement and things like that. You need to drop animations on if you want to support the, the, the video background, like the mail app that I showed you earlier on. But um, it's very interesting, and um, it's a lot, of, a lot of fun once you get into it and start making your apps look very pretty. Um, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a whiz. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention as well was in the um, calculator, the other thing was that when it ran, um, <coughs> excuse me, um, it actually, um, 
it matches the Windows theme. So if you've got dark mode um, Windows theme, then it will come up with the dark mode. And if you've got light mode enabled, then it will come up with the light mode. Okay. And the way it does that is if I go to... Um, and choose options. Um, my poor laptop is grinding. Um, and choose appearance. Um, you'll see in here that I what I've done is I've got some of the standard VCL um, themes, and I've picked a couple that I know look pretty, so to speak. And uh, the two that I've chosen are Windows 10 and Tablet Dark. The Tablet Dark, in my opinion, is the one that most matches Windows 10 Dark Mode, and Windows 10 is the one that matches most closely um, the Windows 10 Light Mode. So remember those theme names. Okay, they're, they're built in. You just go right click, options, and then appearance. Now, what happens is um, this little piece of code here um, runs uh, um, this function, set appropriate theme mode. And you pass it the name of the dark mode um, theme that you picked in your options or the name of the light mode theme that you picked in your options. Okay, and um, what that does, which should open in a moment, is it will call a function in a unit that I wrote, which again is out on the internet. You can go to my GitHub and download it, um, but I've included a copy of it in the GitHub for this particular um, set of uh, um, uh, projects here. But uh, here are the um, the, the code, code. Here's the functions that you need to support dark mode. Really, the only thing you ever need is this support dark mode and light mode and it'll just do it for you so it'll pick your theme and theme everything you're going to have to make sure everything looks okay with your theming because if you set the theme up and you get it wrong um, some things might not appear in the colors you were expecting uh, so some dark um, text that you've put on somewhere um, might suddenly not work properly um, the way to overcome that is to make sure that you are always um, uh, picking the font names that are um, correct. So CL window is uh, window uh, coloring. And the character set, by the way, is always Sego UI. And if you remember the unsettings main, where we use that a lot, it's absolutely everywhere. So the, the um, caption and the text is always Sego UI. Uh, for the font, and in fact, in this particular one, it's Seagull UI Lite. They do tell you in the Microsoft Guide which ones to use and what sizes. They even tell you what to do with the number of spaces of pixels between here. Um, so if you're going to spend uh, the next lifetime trying to completely reproduce every window screen there is, um, they've laid it out for you. It will take you a long time. They've got thousands of people working on Windows and, uh, and uh, professional designers, and there's probably just you. And uh, yeah. Good luck if you want to reproduce Windows for some random reason. Um, so that's it. Like I say, the code is up on GitHub. And if you go to um, my GitHub, you'll be able to get hold of it. Um, meanwhile, let's go back to um, the presentation. So um, some resources. The official Microsoft Fluent UI site is the one that you see there. And the Seagull UI, UI um, uh, details about it are uh, in on Wikipedia. There's a very, very um, interesting blog post, which is one of the things that kind of provoked me to um, have a look at what was going on with this. And that's uh, at medium.com, blah, blah, blah. And also the controls that I was using for the ones that are the true Fluent UI look rather than just the FireMonkey um, version of it that I did or the uh, VCL version where it just simply goes transparent, which is not very uh, good at all. Um, but you could still do that and then add the Seagull UI fonts and flatten everything down and change the icons. Um, is at almdev.com. Uh, I know that. Um, the uh, uh, developer from our media dev is probably on this webinar. I'm re pre recording this part, so I don't know for certain, but he was last time. But um, I, I cannot say enough good things about these controls. They are extremely um, complicated with the number of properties and methods that they've got. But 
once you've set those up the first time, it's very, very easy to reproduce them, and you can actually do it in code as well. And I cannot say enough good things about them. They're really great set of controls. Okay. Well, I hope it's been useful. Uh, don't forget, go to um, my blog and look at the um, the original post for Fluent UI Part 1. And you can also um, contact me if you like and go to about.me for slash Ian Barker or email me on Gmail. I do respond. I'm extremely busy all the time, really, really busy. I get a lot of emails, a lot of messages and things like that. And I have a full-time job as a developer. So um, I can't always um, promise that I'm going to be around. So, um, you know, I'll, I'll give it my best shot. That's all I can say. Um, thanks very much. And I'll hand you back to myself live and uh, I think Jim as well for the Q&A. Awesome. Thank you so much, Ian, for that fantastic session. Uh, see, there's a few requests for some links in here. You already got those in the chat window for everybody. Yeah, it's been a little bit busy with people <laughs> asking links and uh, and code repositories. As uh, as it said in um, one of the questions, the all of the code uh, I showed today is up there on GitHub, and anybody can download it um, and play around with it. I, really, the intention was to kind of give people a little bit of a head start rather than answer every question you could possibly have about Fluent UI. So um, that's where I was aiming for, particularly with the FireMonkey app. I wanted to show that FireMonkey is very, very powerful, and you can do a lot of um, attractive things that fit in with the idea of Fluent UI. Uh, but, of course, if you really want all those pretty sort of highlights on the buttons and things like that, then the yeah, media dev stuff is really, um, that seems to be the way to go. So, you know. Yeah, uh, you, you know, that's kind of what the thing that struck me is that as I was watching this, it's like, it's cool to see what you can do. And it's like, I just want to get a hold of the code and start playing with this because that's I think where I'm going to figure this all out. <laughs> and, you know, for me, I'm very much a, a learn by doing kind of person. <laughs> yeah, and I, I think that's, and some people are visual learners and some people aren't. And some people, obviously, I appreciate that many of the people that are um, on the webinar may not speak English as their first language. And during these webinars, we're talking very quickly. And, um, you know, not everybody can catch everything that's being said. I do try and put the slides up on my blog so that people can review them at their leisure. And we do try and make sure the, the replays are there so you can pause it and have a look. But as you say, sometimes there's no <laughs> there's no replacement for actually loading the code and having to play with it yourself. The Fire Monkey app was a lot of fun. It was actually remarkably easy to do um, to, to do some of the things you uh, you, you want to do, like the you know the things that pop up, you know the shadows and stuff like that. That's all Fire Monkey. That's no code there. You you could do a whole user interface and never write a single line of code. It's quite cool. Uh, apparently, oh, there's fancy underscore UI. Oh, yeah. I, in fact, um, there are a few. Um, oh, sorry. Did, oh, did I? I did put the wrong link. Oh, that's that's clever of me, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Yes, that's the right link there. Um, the other thing as well is there are a few libraries around that help give Fluent UI look and feel to the apps. And you can do, um, you know, UWP apps if you really want to, although they're kind of going out of fashion um, quite rapidly. But um, I have seen one set of components that actually allowed you to put XAML in the components. Um, XAML, for those that don't know, is X-A-M-L, XAML, I think. And uh, it's... Um, it's Microsoft's design language. It's a bit like if you right click on a form and say view as text, it's the same thing, but for Microsoft's uh, applications. What this, this set of controls allowed you to do was to paste XAML into there and uh, you know you could have your app actually hosting uh, um, natively uh, components uh, like you know, uh, uh, Fluent UI components. But I tried that. I found it extremely difficult to use. I think they're still um, in early days with that set of components, but there there are a few, like I say, out there. The ones I found best were our media dev. They were so cheap that I think he's crazy telling him at the price he does, but that's up to him. Uh, and uh, and a lifetime license was well, an absolute bargain. 
and uh, they're very good you know it's uh, it's just the hard part is the there's quite a, a big um, hill to climb with all the properties and events and things like that that it runs but uh, yeah it's it's good fun yeah fantastic you know it's it's interesting the you said do if you have some way out it's it feels like I, mean, I guess sometimes we joke about microsoft's always changing things but sometimes it feels like by the time you figure something out it's like get going away <laughs> yeah. well, i couldn't believe it I, I went to record the video and and uh there's the setting screen looking different i not more than two days ago i had the same screen it was identical <laughs> i'm like oh there's some patch got downloaded from windows and they removed a bunch of stuff off the right hand side fair enough i mean that's their, their their prerogative but it was a bit annoying when you're trying to uh fool people into thinking they're looking at the real setting screen instead of a delphi program but what can you do there's millions of them and i and, and only one of me <laughs> yeah yep yep well we're have some cloning technology coming out so we can we can fix that <laughs> i'm i'm up for having some clones as long as the real original like me gets to go and sit on the beach and do nothing whilst my my clones do all the hard work <laughs> i know you say that but i know you get on the beach and start itching to write some uh write some code <laughs> my wife thinks that too <laughs> yeah i'm not allowed a laptop in certain areas of the house <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much, Ian, for this. This is fantastic as usual. Um, I have a few people that tell me they really enjoy your webinar specifically. Just you, you do a good job explaining things and make it very interesting. Thanks. So, yeah. And there's another one coming up soon. Um, oh, if people yeah. watching replay, you may have already missed it. But next week, uh, what we do? Oh, we're doing a, a multi-device um, app that targets Linux, Windows, and Mac OS from one piece of code. So uh, that's uh, going to be worth doing. Yeah, great stuff. Fantastic. All right. Thank you so much. And we will talk with you later. Take care, everybody. Thanks a lot, Jim. Bye-bye, everybody.